Partial fractions is like the reverse of putting something over a common denominator. So we're going to start with having simple denominators, something like this. Now that could have come from two fractions that have been combined to have a common denominator there, so it would look something like this. You've got the, um, the two parts that made up the denominator as your two separate fractions. Now if you were starting with that one that's got the a and the b in it, um, and you wanted to express it as a single fraction, you'd put it over a common denominator. And when it's algebraic like this, the easiest thing would be to, to multiply those two things together to make your common denominator. Now if you did that, it would end up looking like this. Now from that line there we get that the tops are all equal, so the, the numerators. So we've got 4 plus x is equal to a multiplied by 2 minus x plus b multiplied by 1 plus x. That was just whatever the a and b needs to be times by to be able to go over that common denominator. Now from here we'll just expand that out and we can solve this by equating coefficients. There's two methods of doing it. I'm going to show you equating coefficients first. So that's we look at the x terms on both sides and they have to be equal. So on the left hand side we have um, a coefficient of 1 with the x. So we don't need to worry about writing the x's, we're just looking at the coefficients of them. And on the right hand side we have a minus a and a b that go with the x's. So we're just looking for all the x terms. And then if we look at the constants, which I'm noting as x to the power of 0, because uh, usually I talk about these as looking at the x term, or the x squared term, or the constant term, so it's all, all about the x's, so that's why I've called the constant x to the power of 0. Now on the left hand side we have a 4, and on the right hand side we've got 2a and b. They're all the constants in the equation, so they have to be equal as well. Then by simultaneous equations we can work out what a and b are. Then we rewrite our original equation, putting in place the a and the b that we've just worked out. Now the other way of doing this is by substituting in values. So we pick um, a value that helps us out. So here I'm going to pick x equals 2 because of this bracket here. It would turn that bracket into a 0. So we're, we would eliminate the a first and then we can work out b. So on the left hand side, if we put in x equals 2, we get 4 plus 2, and on the right hand side we get 0a and 3b. So we can use that to work out what b is. And then we use the other bracket to, work, to substitute a value of x that would make that one 0. So if we put x equals minus 1, that second bracket becomes 0. So on the left we get uh, 4 minus 1, and on the right 3a plus 0b. And from there we can work out what a is. And then once again, just write it into the form that we've been asked for. Okay, let's have a look at what happens if we have three factors on the bottom of our fraction. Something like this. You should be able to logically see where this is going. So this would separate out into three fractions with our a, b and c at the top. Now if we wanted to combine them into a common denominator this is what it would look like. So we'd have our common denominator timesing those three things together and then a would have to be multiplied by the two denominators of the other fractions, b by the two denominators of the other fractions and so on. So it looked like this. So our top lines are equal and we can go ahead and do some, I'm going to choose some substitution on this one. So if we do x equals minus 1, then that will get rid of these brackets there. They will become 0. So we get rid of the a and the, and the c term and we can just work on what b is. So with x being minus 1, we get 5 minus 7 on the left hand side. And if you put x equals minus 1 into the, the brackets with b there, you get 2. And we can work out that b is minus 1. Then if we substitute in another value, we've got x equals 1. That helps us to zero out those two brackets. And work out what we've got, and we get an answer for c. And then our constant term, see I'm combining the two methods here, um, because there isn't a, a straightforward... Well, I think it's it's easier to just look at the constant terms now that we've got two of the terms. Um, so on the left-hand side, we've got no constants. We've just got zero. Um, so on the right hand side you just look at what the constants would be from the um, the last values in each of those brackets as you multiply them by the letters. So we get minus a minus b plus c. Now since we've got b and c already that one's quite easy to work out. 
whom we get a equals 3. So you just need to choose whichever method works best for the situation you're given in, and you might combine them, um, but you, you need to always be looking for the fastest way to do things. So now that we've got our values, we rewrite that into our fractions. <laughs> 